Okay, we're going to have a little look at learning plateaus, their causes and solutions. And really what we're after is how come when you're performing skill or learning something new, there comes a point where you might just level off and you don't get any better uh, and you continue to play at that level, but for some reason you can't improve and we want to have a little look at the causes of that and then possible solutions uh, to help us perform our skill and then perform in a game a little better. Okay, so that's just a refresher of these stages of learning and this plateau that we get can actually be related to the associative stage going into the autonomous stage where you can perform under pressure uh, without consciously thinking about the skill you're going to perform we'll come back to that a little later and um, so these performance curves are definitely not called learning curves even though you can attribute performing a little better as we can see on this graph performance goes up you can attribute that to learning there are other elements, including luck, which might enable someone to perform a skill at a higher level. Um, so we can't call them learning curves, definitely not. Um, however, we are going to attribute most of the things that we do when we improve to uh, learning. And it's a great way to show progress of an athlete over time. So as the number of trials that are attempted continue to go up and we keep having more of a go at the skill we're trying to perform. We get an increase in the performance, and this can be graphed. Okay? And this typical S-shaped curve is something we are looking at on a regular basis because people tend to get a little better at some skills. And then when they pick up for whatever reason what that skill might be and what they need to do, they start to form an awful lot better. So we get this steep acceleration. And then we come to this plateau which can be a problem for us if we want to continue to increase our performance. And it's what causes that plateau and indeed what solutions we can come up with, which tends to form our question. Okay, before we talk about those causes and solutions, there's just a, a couple of other graphs that you might see um, during a, a learning uh, plateau question or a performance curve question. First one, the negative performance curve, you can see here how we have a really steep acceleration of knowledge before it plateaus out. So we have a negative acceleration because we very quickly learn what we have to do and then we plateau off. This is different to a positive performance curve. Because a positive, we have a slower start before we understand what we're going to do and then the plateau comes. And then we have linear performance. So uh, for every time that you attempt the skill, your performance increases in linear fashion. And there are three other graphs that you might see in an exam question. Okay, so let's try and relate these performance curves to a skill. We're going to use the forward roll, um, and hopefully we can all remember how difficult perhaps that was to learn for some of us, certainly myself. And we're going to use this as our performance curve. So we understood what was necessary because our uh, instructor or coach showed us uh, what to do and we thought well we can definitely roll over and we got to this level of performance but then we plateaued now so it's definitely a plateau we've got an awful lot um more performance that we could perhaps rise up to and indeed perform better so we need to know what's caused that plateau and 
just here we can see a number of reasons you would give for a plateau. Um, now physical limitation, the ability in a forward roll to actually push off either hard enough to be able to rotate or indeed to put your uh, chin on your chest so you don't land on the top of your head. Um, the ability to put your limbs and coordinate them in the correct way. That physical limitation, whether it be that you're too young or perhaps you've had an injury, um, that can be a real factor in a, a causing a plateau and something very difficult to overcome. Your skill level um, is another factor. So if you have done something uh, for the first, second time um, and you kind of understand what's going on, like a forward roll, um, you're going to need to practice to get better and if you don't practice very many times or you leave it an awful long time in between each time that you have a go, your current skill level will remain quite low and we have a plateau. And then something often happens in my PE classes, we get a little bit of fatigue or boredom. So fatigue, we work too hard and we find it very difficult to keep performing the movement. That can lead to a plateau or boredom, a, a disinterest, um, so no real desire to get any better at the skill um, and with a forward roll um, that's very possible that could happen and it also comes with a lack of motivation and lack of motivation really can cause a plateau when we're learning anything as we know from all our all our subjects that we do in school but that lack of motivation to do a forward roll why not want to do it why would I want to get any better so I have again a plateau and then of course you've got the very poor instruction so if I'm not asking a student to place his hands in the correct place, not asking him to put power in at the appropriate time, head position, that poor coaching can lead to a plateau. Therefore, we have an awful lot of causes um, that create this plateau in our performance curve and don't allow people to perform to their best. Okay, so it makes sense that uh, if we're being asked what causes a plateau, on a performance curve, we might also be asked to overcome it. And right here, we've got the plateau we just referred to. And this is really our aim as a coach, is to come off that plateau and increase our performance uh, the more we uh, try and do something, which again, our example could be a forward roll, or let's perhaps go for a free throw shot in basketball. And this increase in performance is actually the overcoming of the plateau, and it can be quite difficult. Um, so in order to get the marks, really, we can relate it again to that physical readiness. So could we train in a different way that isn't related directly to the skill? Could we maybe train our muscles um, and perhaps relate that to our lower six practical work? Then we could try and break up those practice sessions. So as I was going to do the forward roll, perhaps I could do it over a, a gymnastic session. I could perhaps do it three times within the hour, but have different other fun activities going on. Or perhaps we could break it up over the week so they don't feel that they're being put upon and that also allows fatigue to become less of a factor. Um, something you might well have experienced, uh, particularly in the younger years, during PEs, those, those external rewards, including praise uh, from t uh, teacher, the commendation system. Um, if you give those external rewards, that can drive someone to go up above that plateau. Um, certainly change the coach so me out and someone who can certainly instruct on forward rolls or free throws an awful lot better than I can if you change that coach that can get us off that plateau and then uh, a little bit of a factor going into our A2 course is that ability to rehearse mentally to, to allow the student to think about what they've got to do play it over in their mind and then try and get them to increase their confidence alongside it and that comes a little bit into our stress management course in A2. Uh, so there we go. Uh, learning plateaus in performance curves. And there are causes and solutions. And you have to be ready to answer both.